Today we are honoring 32 exceptional engineers employed in the federal government. Engineering is an important and learned profession. As professional engineers, we are expected to exhibit the highest standards of honesty and integrity. Good morning. Thank you, National Society of Professional Engineers, for inviting, inviting me to speak at the Federal Engineer of the Year Award Ceremony. This is a humbling honor. During our ceremony today, we will celebrate the remarkable accomplishments and impacts of our outstanding federal engineers. As was noted during my introduction, I'm the chief engineer of the U.S. Public Health Service. Our mission is to protect, promote, and advance the health and safety of our nation. This mission takes our engineers to locations and projects all across America and around the world. Our engineers are involved in the design and validation of safety controls and medical devices, disaster response to restore communities, mitigation of risks, and the prevention of affliction. This is truly noble work. Though it remains daunting to account for that which does not exist or occur as a result of our expertise and compounding impact. To have two finalists this year for the Federal Engineer of the Year and previous Federal Engineers of the Year working in public health is remarkable and a testament to the engineering achievement. We thank the society for this recognition. Now we'll return to the mission of the Public Health Service to protect, promote, and advance the health and safety of our nation. Does this mission resonate with you as engineers? I believe it will. I described engineers to those outside of our profession as coming as two types, fixers, and breakers. As engineers working directly for health, our PHS engineers are clearly fixers. However, there are many engineers whose work is to break things, stressing materials and machines to failure, tearing down buildings, or completing military operations to advance an objective. While I describe them as breakers, Aren't they really working towards a fix? Identifying better materials and designs, ensuring confidence levels and reliable operations, clearing the way for human achievement, and promoting liberty and freedom. So may it be recognized that engineers, as, that may be recognized as engineers, we are all fixers serving humanity. We know that engineering is a noble cause, providing for man's most basic need of health, accomplished through the service of others. To what ends is this service? Our service of engineers is to provide life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, to advance humanity towards human underpinnings of prosperity and joy. This is the foundation of society. Grounded by engineering, secured through the health of its citizens. Does this, mes does this mission resonate with you now? As engineers, I welcome you all to the Public Health Service. Since you are now an extension of the Public Health Service, and I am your chief engineer, I am duty bound to issue you a challenge. The theme of this year's Engineer Week is Engineers Invent Amazing. That's the legacy of our profession. Though to continue, we must develop and inspire the young. I challenge all of you here today to develop young engineers in your offices and organizations Reach back to your universities and your high schools. Engage your local communities and the schools there and inspire the next generation of engineers. Humanity will continue to face new and recurring issues. Extreme weather, famine and mass migration, 
weapons of mass destruction. In America, we face the test of aging infrastructure and healthcare. Innovative engineering will more likely hold the solutions rather than policy. And I believe as engineers and the engineers of the future, we will meet these challenges to invent amazing. Again, congratulations to our award winners and to all engineers through our shared mission. I welcome you again to the Public Health Service. Good afternoon. It's a great uh, pleasure and privilege for me to be here with you today to continue an NSPE tradition going back now over 40 years. Over that period, the Federal Engineer of the Year Awards Program has honored hundreds of accomplished professional engineers, including many of you here today from past years and a very impressive group who will be added to that role today. Each of our 2019 Agency Engineers of the Year our engineers uh, were, are, were highlighted in our program, and I hope you have watched their names and some of the photos of them in action that were scrolling across the screens before and during our luncheon. I know receiving a plaque is not probably an unusual experience for many of you in the room, but receiving this plaque, we hope, should mean something more because you are being recognized among your professional peers and by your professional peers, people who understand what you face and what you do every day and wanted to be sure others saw it too. We are proud of you and your accomplishments as engineers. So this year we are recognizing 32 outstanding agency winners. Now we will move on to presenting the 10 engineers among the agency winners who were chosen by our judging panel as NSBE's top 10 Federal Engineers of the Year. On behalf of the National Society of Professional Engineers and the professional engineers in government, it is, gives me great pleasure to announce the 2019 Federal Engineer of the Year Award. Will you please join me on stage, Major Justin DeLorette, PhD, PE, U.S. Department of Air Force, 8th Civilian Engineering Squadron. Well, I think the Admiral hit it uh, right when he said uh, that, that we should be humbled to be here. Um, I'm completely humbled to be here. I just got off the plane from South Korea, uh, so I'm a little jet lagged. Um, but none of us would be here without a lot of support. Uh, so I have a few people I want to thank. First is the Society of Professional Engineers for continually recognizing on daily uh, the work of, of, of folks in the private and public sector, uh, and really ultimately acting as a watchdog uh, for all of us. Uh, to ensure our interests are represented as, as those in uh, professional practice. Um, I also owe a significant debt of gratitude to my wife, Megan, and my two daughters, Josie and Renee. Um, couldn't be here today, uh, but they've been with me every step of the way, encouraging me um, as I've pursued a, a career in engineering. Uh, to my advisor, uh, Paul Block at the University of Wisconsin, who taught me uh, that Engineering success is a lot about perspiration and perhaps uh, a little less about inspiration at times. Uh, and then to my current commander, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, John Paul Connor at, uh, at Kunsan Air Base for recognizing the collaborative work that we've done together this last year. And, and I'm just honored to have, uh, have been nominated for, uh, for this uh, on behalf of our Red Devil Squadron. Uh, the thing I want to leave folks with, I guess, is uh, a, a quote that my mom put in a card for me uh, a while back that was, and it's been attributed to William Shakespeare and Pablo Picasso and a bunch of other people, but it, it goes like this. It, uh, it says the purpose of life um, is discovering your talents. The work of life is honing those talents and the meaning of life, therefore, is giving those talents away. And I think that's what the Admiral talked about today is really giving those talents away and growing the next generation of engineers because we've all certainly discovered something we're good at. We've all worked really hard to refine that and I think the challenge moving forward is really to learn to give that away to the to the next crop of engineers that are going to be involved in federal service. Uh, so with that, thank you very much. Thank you. 